Hello everyone, this video is about our paper Machine Learning with Adversaries, Byzantine Tolerance uh, Gradient Descent, a joint work with my co-authors Pema Blanchard, Rashid Garawi, and Julian Steiner, uh, which is published in the 2017 Neural Information Processing Systems Conference and tackles the problem of reliable distributed machine learning. Today, machine learning is ubiquitous. It is used to recognize your photos, and of course, it was used probably to recommend this video for you on YouTube. It's also used on other applications like diagnosing skin cancer with dermatologist accuracy or uh, other medical applications like diagnosing cardiac arrhythmia or pneumonia. So at the heart of most of today's machine learning, or at least most of today's supervised machine learning, lies the concept of gradient descent. Roughly speaking, learning with gradient descent boils down to the following. So imagine you have an error, which is how bad your model performs on the training data, you can change the parameter to minimize this error. So for example, you start somewhere here, you are doing this bad. So this is how, how bad you are doing on the training data, on the data you are using to train your, your model. And actually, you don't know, you don't know this shape. You don't, you don't know that you are moving on this cost function. You don't know exactly the cost function, but you can use the data to evaluate the slope. And using the slope, you can know that as long as you go in this direction, you are minimizing the error and you are improving your model. Back to our uh, medical application example in the beginning. So imagine you are a group of hospitals and collectively you want to learn a model that recognizes pneumonia. Each hospital ha has its own private medical data. With this data, this hospital can do gradient descent, follow the gradients and then eventually learn something. But they want to speed up this, they want to gather all the, uh, all the collective knowledge without actually sharing what they have. They don't want to share their patient's information, their patient's uh, uh, radiography. But So what they can do is individually, they will estimate a gradient, send it to some common pot. We will call this a server, but it just can be an abstraction. So each, each hospital can actually be a server gathering gradients from other hospitals. And they will send gradients, not actual data. This server will aggregate the gradients and then send the new model that is the new value of the parameter that was collectively learned by those hospitals. This is a setting that you can also have, uh, for example, in smartphone apps that offers you the service in exchange of your computing power. For example, you have smartphones and each smartphone computes some gradients and you collect gradients from those smartphones and collectively they learn without actually share, sharing their data. The problem here is that some of them can be compromised. So imagine an attacker attacked a hospital or attacked some smartphones or an enemy of YouTube uh, uh, took over some accounts on YouTube and start sending false uh, clicks to fake the recommendation system and you end up not having this video recommended in if you are interested in distributed machine learning. The question we ask here is how could this aggregation done by the server be resilient to the presence of some adversaries among those hospitals that we will call workers. If we look at today's distributed machine learning, we find that the aggregation rule is mostly based on averaging or variance of it. And the problem with averaging is that you can fake it. You can pull the average or a linear combination. You can pull it whenever, wherever you want if you are an adversary. Averaging is not resilient and it uses additional costs, for example, in terms of fraud detection or performance limitation. For instance, if you look at Facebook or Flickr or whatever uh, application that does machine learning, you find that their API has some limits, some usage li limits that acts as a barrier to fraudulent behaviors. Because they do averaging, they limit the amount of information a single user can send. In our work, we want to do distributed machine learning in a robust manner, so we won't take averages, and we don't want to spend work detecting fraudulent behaviors or, or, or limiting how much gradients a single worker can send. So if we look at the problem again from the cost function perspective, uh, at each step, the collective parameter is somewhere here. First worker is honest, he's sending a gradient that's some, something like this. Second worker is honest, third worker is honest. They are all sending gradients that somehow approximate the correct one. So G is minus the gradient of the cost function at point X. Obviously, if you have a malicious 
worker sending a vector that is not following this gradient. Checking the average wouldn't work. What we would like are gradients that somehow lie within a cone of security around the real gradient. We give a sense of this cone of security in the paper. We define a concept called alpha f Byzantine resilience, which boils down to having an angle, a limited angle between what a worker is bringing and the correct gradient. And we define our solution, Kroon, as the vector that is the closest possible to its n minus f minus 1 closest neighbors, where n is the total number of workers and f is the number of suspected ones. For example, suspected ones would be the number of smartphones that didn't download the last security update. Uh, so our solution, Kroon, that we explain in more details in the paper is, to our knowledge, the first aggregation rule that is provably resilient to asymptotically half uh, malicious machines, so machines that are compromised. So in the presence of attacks, we also show that current aggregation rules do not to tolerate such attacks. Uh, the proof of convergence does not put constraints on the type of attack, so we prove that Kroon converges whatever is the type of, of an attack, as long as it comes from less than half of the workers. Of course, there is a catch, which is that Kroon is not as fast as averaging when there is no attack. So we present an optimization we call multi Kroon, and we experimentally show that Kroon performs comparatively to averaging when, um, when there are no attacks. Just as a, a quick note, during the past, uh, the, the past two years or so, there was a focus on adversarial machine learning with respect to adversarial examples. So when examples are trying to fool uh, a machine learning model. In our paper, we focus on adversarial learners, so workers that are collectively trying to do gradient descent and sending wrong gradients to, to fake the, the, the group. Uh, so this is the slight difference between um, what people are calling adversarial machine learning these days and what we call adversarial machine learning in this paper. Of course, there are more details and more in-depth uh, technical details in the paper. If you come by, by the, at the poster session uh, at NIPS, we'll be happy, um, uh, so I'll be there presenting the poster and be happy to give um, more details and answer questions. There will be more on the topic of reliable machine learning at large uh, in a dedicated series on the partner YouTube channel of EPFL, Zetabytes.